Hey guys, so this is skill one, goal setting. I'm sure that majority of us already have a wealth of experience and knowledge about goal setting, but we may not understand what makes some goals more achievable than others, as well as the planning behind it more effective than others. So in this lesson, we're gonna go step by step, in depth, learning how to make a goal achievable and effective, as well as learn a common language to where we can teach others how to effectively set goals and plan for them as well. Um, this skill is not necessarily for short-term goals, but more so long-term and performance goals. So let's get started. Okay, so here you can see that goal setting is represented by the icon with a compass in it. Goal setting is to identify, plan for, and commit to the pursuit of a goal that results in more optimal performance, sustained motivation, and increased effort. So the bottom line up front of goal setting is self-regulation. Self-regulation allows us to make the necessary sacrifices in the short term to get us where we want to go in the long run. Goal setting facilitates resilience by giving us a process for planning to achieve our goals, which allows us to grow and thrive. As well as goal setting can be used to plan for dream goals, such as climbing a mountain, retiring at a certain rank, um, or enhancing performance, such as maxing a PT test or improving your BRN score. So here we have this crazy picture with arrows pointing every which direction. So if you're starting out on a road trip, would this sign be very helpful? Probably not. Goal setting requires a deliberate, well-thought-out plan as well as a tracking system to ensure progress. Progress requires deliberate behavior. The picture shows randomness that could occur without being deliberate or systematic. Behaving deliberately requires motivation. So motivation not only energizes our behavior, but also provides direction and persistence of that behavior. Goal setting is a technique that soldiers, civilians, anyone really, can use to enhance their own motivation and make progress. Goal setting works, guys. It's effective in many areas for many tasks and performances, as well as for many people, including both individuals and groups. Okay, so now we're going to talk about motivation and how it's not very easy all the time to stay motivated. When I say go, what I want you to do is press pause on this video, go back to the Google Classroom, and under goal setting, click the Modern Warfare video. It has the onion in parentheses. Um, think about your initial reasons for joining the military and the fact that your experience thus far may not have been everything that you expected it to be when you initially joined. Throughout this video, it's going to show that as you pursue your goal, it might look like this. It might get boring that you might have the thought, you know, I've been on this path for a while now. I'm not going anywhere. So it's motivating to set goals and it can be motivating to pursue goals, but you're not going to feel inspired and enthusiastic every single day. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So at this time, press pause and go watch that video. So now that you've watched that, a lot of us can maybe relate to some of that and we've all been there feeling those things and living those moments out. So the takeaway is that there's going to be times when you don't feel like you're making progress, which can be really frustrating. And because of that, it's essential that we have a good understanding of motivation so we can maintain it until our goal is achieved. And like I said, there's probably going to be times as you pursue this goal that you find yourself feeling stagnant, unmotivated, not seeing any signs of moving forward. And this can cause a lot of people to give up on their goals. So again, it's, it's really important and essential to understand the various sources of motivation and what deliberate efforts we can make to maintain our goal long term. So what motivates you and others? Um, like I said, you're going to see this on your practical exercise assessment. You're going to fill in what motivates you and how you as a leader um, motivate those you have led, and you're going to name specific motivators. So, for example, if someone says rewards, I want you to name a more specific type of reward. Um, a variety of factors such as age, rank, marital status influence what motivates us. 
Sometimes our goals are even given to us by others, which makes it especially hard to find the motivation to complete them. Um, it can be challenging to generate your own motivation, but even harder to inspire motivation in others. So goal achievement, especially the achievement of long-term goals, relies on understanding our own and other sources of motivation. So now we're going to talk about sources of motivation based on Richard Ryan and Ed PC research. So intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation refers to doing something because it's inherently interesting or enjoyable. So think about children playing. Why do they do it? Because it's thoroughly interesting and enjoyable to them. We need to understand other sources of motivation to utilize when we or those we lead are intrinsically and motivated for certain tasks. So here we have instrumental and internal. Instrumental motivation refers to doing something because it will lead to certain outcomes, specifically reward slash punishment and shame slash guilt. So rewards and punishment, rewards are provided to reinforce the desired behavior and punishments are provided to deter behaviors that aren't desired. So an example, if I improve my qual score, maybe I'll get a two day pass. If I don't improve, I'm going to have to spend a ton of extra time cleaning my weapon, going to the EST, and going back to the range. Shame and guilt, in order to avoid these motions, people often engage in the desired behavior. So an example of that, you know, if I feel I'll be letting my platoon down when I fail, I don't want to be responsible for that. With instrumental motivators, uh, they can have short-term benefits but aren't as uh, as effective in the long run because they undermine autonomy, such as your desire to be in charge of your own behavior. Instrumental motivators can be overused, which can reduce internal motivation. So internal motivation uh, refers to doing something that is not inherently enjoyable because it's something internally valued or reflects the individual's core identity. So valuing the behavior, recognizing that this value in doing an activity may cause someone to engage in this desired behavior. An example of that would be, I know extra time at the EST will help me be a better, better soldier. Self-identity, the core values that guide the way we live our lives every day and our beliefs about who we are influence what goal-related behaviors we engage in. An example of that, I believe people should work hard. I have always been a hard worker. I'll do whatever is necessary to achieve this goal. Internal motivators mimic intrinsic motivation and tend to be more effective, especially for long term. Successfully achieving goals and putting in the effort and sacrifice that will be necessary requires that we choose goals that are personally meaningful. One way to ensure the goals we choose to invest in are worthy of our full commitment is to align our goals with our own personal values. So these are some of the benefits of internal motivation, decreasing anxiety, increasing positive emotion, provide satisfaction. Um, people who can activate internal motivation for their behaviors have greater well-being and exhibit resilience. Uh, these people are meeting their desire for autonomy. The, they feel they are in charge of their own behavior as opposed to being controlled by others. Um, this can be applied to performing required tasks such as cleaning the motor pool, doing PT, etc. Uh, by finding ways to connect the tasks of personal values and identity. So your bucket list. Everyone has a bucket list. So on your assessment, you'll be asked to um, write some of your bucket list ideas. Um, some of the goals may be simple. Um, your bucket list, if I haven't mentioned this before, is where you're going to be pulling from uh, to set your goal. And like I said, some of them are going to be simple, such as skydiving or traveling, where the comprehensive process we're about to walk through uh, may seem like overkill. But as you use the goal setting principles, however, you will find that they become more automatic and can be applied to any goal, all goals. So let's look at why goal setting might be a useful tool. So the benefits of goal setting 
When done in an effective and deliberate manner, um, it has many benefits which are similar to those provided by a GPS. So, goal setting generates motivation which, uh, which activates behavior and gets you working towards your goal. Goal setting directs your behavior by creating a roadmap to the goal so that you're focusing on the right things at the right times. Goal setting directs behavior. So by creating a roadmap to the goal, you're focusing on the right things at the right times. And it also adjusts behavior by promoting your, uh, the right development and use of new strategies. If your original plan becomes outdated, you're more likely to adjust and less likely to give up if you have a comprehensive plan set in place. Goal setting increases persistence and sustains behavior by creating a series of manageable steps to follow in order to achieve the desired outcome and making you more willing to make the necessary sacrifices in the short term to get where you want to go in the long term. So it allows you to maintain motivation by seeing your progress and celebrating small successes along the way. And again, goal setting is done by you. It's a self-regulatory skill. So it's a strategy that helps you take ownership for your own motivation and progress. So here we see the seven step process. And going through these slides, y'all just ignore the participant guide pages at the top. Um, that's where I just combined all of it into your assessment and practical exercise on the drive or the Google Classroom. So each goal, or excuse me, each step has a key word, which we'll go over again later as we visit each step individually. So here we go. So get, uh, steps one through four are the planning phase. And then steps five through seven are the acting phase. Um, and the whole point of the circle model is to represent that this process doesn't have a real endpoint, meaning you're revisiting previously completed steps, which will be necessary as you pursue your goal. And the completion of one goal can lead into starting a new goal, hence the circle. Here are the rest of the keywords. So here we have the goal setting key principles. As you can see, it enhances performance, you know, produces motivation, directs attention, increases effort, and persistence. Uh, motivation matters, you know, it's tapping into and maintaining uh, your motivation by tying it to your personal values. And then self-regulation, like we just mentioned, it's the primary target of goal setting. So this will be your assessment and practical exercise is actually practicing the seven step goal setting. But before we do that, we gotta go over the steps. So step one, the keyword for step one, as we saw is end state. This is a step where you're gonna define your goal. You're gonna ensure the outcome goals created in this step are specific, meaning they paint a very vivid picture in your mind and they have a suspense. This process can be used for personal or career goals, to enhance performances, such as PT tests. Um, I want you to select a goal that's complex and big enough, uh, meaning there is enough work to do to achieve it, and far out in time, such as planning for retirement. Um, with, that's going to warrant the seven-step process. I want them to be specific to be the most effective. So if you do choose retirement, um, just putting retire is going to be less effective, whereas you put retire comfortably in Colorado Springs no later than 2045. So that's more effective because it's specific. And then putting a suspense on your goal, even though it may change later, it gives you less time and room to procrastinate. Leveraging your internal motivation. So... The importance of being internally motivated to achieve your goal and leveraging personal values is one way to maintain that internal motivation. 
So on the assessment practical exercise, you'll see that you can check off boxes of uh, some some of those internal motivators, such as gratitude, personal courage, or you can insert your own. Uh, we're more likely to stay motivated and achieve and achieve our goals when we're internally mo motivated, evaluating people can't talk to me, valuing the behavior or aligning with self-identity rather than you know being motivated by instrumental factors such as rewards or punishment, guilt, etc. Values represent what we aspire to or our north stars, if you will, and guide us every day as we make choices about how to live our lives. Step two, know where you are right now. So this is an assessment step. Um, the key word for step two is energize. We identify what it's going to look like and what the benefits will be when you achieve the goal and the obstacles that will stand in the way. So once you have the end state in your mind, you think about what it's going to be like to arrive. Think of one benefit of getting your final destination. Just as you wouldn't set out on a road trip without checking in different routes for traffic or construction, it doesn't make sense to plan for a goal without doing an inventory of obstacles. So you're going to think of the obstacles that might stand in your way or hold you back from your goal. It's important to use a process of contrasting what it feels like to benefit against what might block your progress. Um, and use the inventory of obstacles as a self-assessment of priority areas that need uh, direct action to, to ensure progress. And we're going to touch on priority areas in a second. Like I said, priority areas. So step three, decide what you need to develop. So the key word for step three, priorities, um, these should be developed from the obstacles identified in step two. So the example of I don't drink enough water or eat a very healthy diet that was used, the broad priority area would be nutrition. Um, or another one, if I don't make time for my spouse, the tension will become an obstacle. We need to spend time together. That priority area would be balance. Priority areas should be broad enough that there's going to be plenty of work to do in each one, such as the examples that I just stated. Step four, you need to make a plan for steady improvement. So the key word for step four is SMART steps. I would remember what SMART steps stand for. Um, but the action statements are indicators what work we need to do to start achieving our goal. And action statements are based on the SMART acronym, uh, which provides guidelines for creating these action statements that actually move us closer to attaining the goal when they're completed. Action statements are most effective when they're specific rather than vague, can be measured, an action that you'll do rather than what you will be avoiding, realistically be accomplished given your schedule, physical ability, fitness, etc. By a certain time, having a suspense attached makes you less likely to procrastinate, even though it may have to change later. You see on the right the examples of some action statements following the SMART guidelines. Step four continued. Followed by action statements, we have power statements. Um, our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves can be assets or obstacles, but either way, they have a big impact on whether we achieve our goals or not. So rather than leave our thoughts and beliefs to chance and increase the odds we'll achieve our goals, in this step, we're being very deliberate about what goes through our heads. So these power statements provide us confidence to engage in the action statements we create. Uh, they engage certain uh, certainty of success and with energy and are the most effective uh, when they are purposeful, meaning you plan to think them deliberately rather than allowing thoughts to occur randomly. Productive, they help you Direct your attention and energy to where it needs to be to perform optimally as opposed to reactive to the circumstances. And then lastly, possible. The possibilities making you 
more optimistic about your abilities, your future, rather than being restricted. So here on the right side, you see the examples of the three P's for power statements in accordance with the action statements previously used. Okay, so here we have a illustration of what a completed goal sheet can look like. Uh, the, there's images, specific language that are personally meaningful and motivating for an individual. So I encourage you to create one of these on your own time, print it out, put it on your wall, have it at your desk at work, um, just as a reminder of uh, pursuing your goal and staying motivated. Step five, pursue regular action. The key word for this step is when, what's important now. As you see, we have the action statement example, drink at least 80 ounces of water. Followed by the power statement, I expect great things out of my body, so I put only great things in it. With these, step five is we come up with a strategy or a system to ensure that these action statements are completed. So it's, it's a system we come up with to keep us accountable. So as you see, a to-do list, revisit each night, if that means setting an alarm or a reminder in your phone having a battle buddy to hold you accountable. Um, but if you really want to achieve the goal you set for yourself, it doesn't make sense to let a single day go by that you don't do something to get closer to it, even if it's a small step like step five and repeating it. Um, typically, you're going to have to repeat this step on a regular basis, whether that be daily or weekly. So step six, the key word for this is maintain motivation. The objective of the strategy is to remind you of the outcome goal, the big picture, and keep that in mind, um, to keep you motivated to achieve it even in the face of obstacles. So sustaining commitment to a goal over a long period of time, is it can be very difficult. So having a plan in place to keep your goal in the forefront of your mind can help you maintain that motivation to achieve it. So as you see here, um, the strategy they suggest is posting a picture of someone who looks like you doing your goal, or you know if you have an icon, a celebrity, print out their picture and just have it as a reminder that you always see to keep that at the forefront of your mind. Um, those who've set the goal of getting promoted oftentimes, you know, place a rank inside their ACUs or OCPs or, you know, Velcro it somewhere where you can visually see it constantly. We know that internal motivation is powerful in terms of sustaining behavior. Therefore, consider creating a commitment strategy that draws on or taps into one or more of your personal values. Um, other people can be a powerful motivator too, such as your spouse, kids, friend, accountability partner. Uh, because obstacles are an inevitable part of pursuing our goals, maintaining motivation also requires planning for obstacles that we can expect to face. So as you see here, you know, when we face an obstacle, finish drinking water and then immediately fill it up, um, whether that be because you're creating an energy drink or that's just how you're holding yourself accountable. It's already there and ready to go. Last but not least, step seven. The keyword for this step is IPR, which stands for in process review. So this step is to check in on the progress towards the goal we've set and identify an initial check-in date. You wanna make it realistic. Um, we can use you know, leveraging of values when faced with an unexpected obstacle and how to use action and power state statements to stay on track for our check-ins. But performing a regular IPR is necessary uh, for the success of your goal. And how frequently you need to check in on your progress depends on your specific goal you've chosen. So if you find um, when you check in, you're not as far as along as you expected or aren't getting certain components of your goal or plan done regularly. Um, you just have to self-reflect. Ask yourself, what's standing in the way? You know, adjust, recalculate, going back to that GPS. 
uh, plan accordingly. If you're accomplishing your set milestones, celebrate success. Um, and obviously in a way that's in line with your goal. Um, but as you see here, the example is every 30 days and they made it specific on the first of the month. Um, so you're going to then brainstorm how you can leverage those values when you face the unexpected obstacles, such as setting a good example for your kids. And you're going to revisit this step as well as plenty of other steps multiple times, but that is the goal setting process. So at this time, if you have any questions, email, call, text, whatever you feel comfortable. If you do text, please put your name at the front of the text so I know who I'm speaking with. But go and complete the practical exercise. I have uploaded a practical exercise example. Again, don't copy and paste. Let this be your work. This is for your goal of self-regulation for you. So, enjoy.